Hi and welcome back to my channel. My name is Natalie from Living the Dream Permaculture and today I wanted to start a four part series in a no tox home. So we've been um, living chemical free for close to 10 years now and I've slowly been making the switch out to no tox products. So not even low tox, just no tox. Um, and um, I'm now at a point where I can say that our home is completely tox free um, apart from a little bit of bleach which I use in my bathrooms um, every couple of months so I wouldn't even say that I'd say maybe once a quarter and I'm really excited because I finally found a way to clean my hair naturally because I couldn't find any shampoos and conditioners that were absolutely no tox and I did look at making my own and that meant buying a whole lot of chemicals um, that I just didn't want in my house. So we're finally at a point where I'm really happy and I'm going to share um, what I've learned over the years with you. Today I'm going to start in the kitchen um, because I think this is probably the easiest place to start. There are so many chemicals in our cleaners nowadays and I think we just forget or choose to ignore the fact that they are really harmful to our health. But to make the switch from chemical laden cleaners to no tox cleaners is really, really simple. And it's a little bit of a journey that I've been on over the last 10 years to make sure my home is safe for little ones that we've been raising here. And over the 10 years, I've learned a lot and um, I've now made the switch to be a totally 100% chemical free home, except for a little bit of bleach, which I use in my bathrooms um, once a quarter. Now I want to talk to you about some of the chemicals that you can find in your cleaners and why they are so bad for you. First we have phytolates and they are in your fragrances. So everything that has a scent that's not from 100% pure essential oils will have phytolates in it. Um, things like dishwashing liquid, hand soaps, spray and wipes. Um, gosh, I don't even know because it's been so long since I've been shopping for cleaners. Um, but even just fragrances that people plug into the wall, um, toilet fresheners, um, even loo paper has fragrances in them sometimes. So make sure that you buy fragrance free toilet paper that hasn't been bleached. Um, these fragrances are actually endocrine disruptors. So it's something that you want to avoid in your home if possible, especially with young children around. The next thing that you that you can find in your um, toxic cleaners are triclosan. And this is in most dishwashing liquids that are um, labeled antibacterial or, or antimicrobial. And what these do is they cause a growth of drug resistant bacteria, which we're seeing more and more nowadays. The next thing that you might find in your toxic chemical cleaners are called quaternary ammonium compounds or QUATS. And these are in antimicrobial products as well. And you'll see the same thing as before. You'll see an increase in um, antibiotic resistant bacteria, which we're seeing, like I said, we're seeing more and more now. The next thing that you might see in your chemical laden cleaners are um, perchlorethylene. I think I said that right. Or P-E-R-C. This is in stain removers um, predominantly, and it's a possible carcinogen and carcinogenic things can cause cancer. The next thing you might see is two butter lexalosum. <laughs> ah, I'm no good at these names. But xylothanol, I think. I'm gonna write all these down below. So if I'm not saying them right, you can find them for yourself and do your own research. And these are in window cleaners and kitchen multi-purpose cleaners. This gives them a sweet smell, so I suppose it takes away from that chemical smell um, that we don't want to be smelling and that sweet fragrance smell that um, we associate with clean homes. And this can lead to narcosis, pulmonary edema, severe liver and kidney um, damage as well. So that's not something that we want to be using in our home, on our skin, because our skin is our largest organ and it does absorb um, what we put on it. And this is something that I only learnt at the beginning of my journey, I didn't realize that if I was standing in my bleach filled shower while I was scrubbing it, that I was actually absorbing all those chemicals and toxins into my body just through my skin. The next thing that we can find in our chemical laden products is ammonia. Um, this is in 
polishing agents for kitchen sinks and stainless steel and glass cleaner and this mainly affects those with asthma um, but also those with lung and breathing difficulties. Chlorine is something else that we'll find and it's in scouring powders, toilet cleaners, uh, mildew removers, um, laundry wideners and of course our tap water. It's a respiratory irritant at an acute level and it is, and it is a serious thyroid disruptor. And the last thing that we can find is sodium hydroxide, which is your Drano or your drain cleaners um, and your oven cleaners. And these are incredibly corrosive. So these are what you use to make your soaps with. Um, so your soap paste and your bar soap. But once you mix it with olive oil and um, it kind of saponifies and it changes its chemical composition, it's no longer corrosive on your skin. Uh, but when you're using it in its pure form to clean your oven or your um, drains, then it is incredibly um incredibly corrosive so you want to avoid that i choose to make my natural cleaners without borax a lot of people like using it that's completely fine that's your choice for your family um, but i feel like it's not safe for my family the eu has actually banned its um, use um, in europe because um, they believe it impacts on reproductive health and irritates the skin and the respiratory tract so um, it's just something i don't use there are other um, ingredients that i can use instead of it I've been making my own soap for nine years, I think, very close to nine years. It's either eight and a half or nine years. And um, basically, I've been using um, that cast oil soap throughout our home. But about six years ago, I started making a liquid version. So this is liquid cast oil soap, and it uses a completely different process to a bar soap. So I'll leave the video up here. Um, and that will talk you through the process of making um, a liquid cast oil soap and it's not just melting a bar soap down. Um, you're going to get cloudy, claggy, gluggy, slimy stuff if you try and do that, which isn't what you want if you wash your dishes. So I use this to wash my dishes. If I do something by hand, I just have it in a pump bottle and I leave that on my sink, which means that I can also wash my hands with that um, during cooking or if I have to come in from outside. So that one there is completely no tox. It does use lye, which um, in its raw form is a chemical. Um, but once you mix it with oil, it saponifies and turns into soap. So there is no real other way to make um, soap without lye. You can use ash, but I haven't gone down that road. It's really long and lengthy. And um, I'm not really interested in learning <laughs> how to make soap from ash because it's just complex and unnecessary. Um, the second thing I make from this liquid cast style soap is um, bench spray, surface cleaner, whatever you want to call it, spray and wipe. Basically, I take a tenth of the liquid cast style soap. So the liquid cast style soap that I make um, is actually a concentrate and a paste. Um, so it's quite thick. Um, but you need to dilute that with water. So usually I dilute that um, about a quarter of a cup of paste to three cups of water. So it does go quite a long way um, and that will make this. And then I dilute that further into my spray and wipe, which is about one tenth of liquid cast oil soap with water. And then I'll pop in an essential oil, oil in there. And my preferred essential oil for the kitchen is um, lemon scented gum um, it's just really nice and citrusy and antibacterial and uh, antimicrobial and all that sort of stuff um, so I just really enjoy that scent in the kitchen I find it's just makes it smell really nice and nice and clean the next thing I make with the liquid castile soap paste is this cream cleaner so it's kind of like jiff um, more like grumptions if you've ever used that. I had a jar of that left here when we moved in and I used it because it was here and I really liked the way it cleaned. It takes stains off benches, it cleans um, cooktops really well um, and it cleans my ceramic sink beautifully. So I wanted to recreate that into something that was no tox. So the way I made that was I put one cup of bicarb in a bowl and I mix in half a cup of warm um, 
cast off soap paste. You could use it not warm, it's just much easier to use um, while it is warm because it's much softer and pliable at that stage. And then I added in 20 mils of eucalyptus oil, um, mixed it really well together, tried to get out all the lumps, and um, I came up with this beautiful paste that cleans beautifully. So I had a rust stain on my bench top from one of my cast iron pans. It tends to do that if I leave it there for longer than I should. And um, the way, the only way I can get that off um, in the past is using grumptions, but this cream cleanser, which is an imitation or copycat um, grumptions, absolutely worked beautifully and got the stain off my bench for me. So I'm really happy with how that's working in my kitchen. Now let's move on to the dishwasher. The dishwasher gets a huge workout here. I use it twice to three times, sometimes more a day, depending on how much I'm cooking. Um, but we are all at home, all five of us, so we do make a lot of dishes and everything is home cooked. So it gets a cert so it certainly gets a workout and I'm not a pre-rinser. A lot of people are, but if I'm gonna be putting in the dishwasher, I'm not going to be pre-rinsing. It's just, there's no point. I might as well just wash them by hand. So I make my own dishwashing powder and I'm going to show you how I make that now. I forgot to mention that in my hand wash and dishwashing liquid, I like to pop in a few drops of lemon um, eucalyptus oil. It just makes it smell really nice. You don't need to do that if you want it fragrance free. That's totally fine, but um, it's an all natural way to um, liven up your dishwashing liquid. So to make your dishwashing powder, to make your dishwashing powder, you need to grab some precarbonate of soda. So this is soda ash. This is basically bicarb that's been heated up and it's just changed the chem chemical composition of it. So you need one cup of sodium carbonate. And you need one cup of bicarbonate of soda. So measuring it out. And you need a quarter cup of citric acid. And I like to put in about 10 drops of lemon essential oil. This isn't necessary, but it does help everything smell really nice. And it just does help clean your glass a little bit more than if you didn't put it in. But if you didn't want to use essential oils, that's completely fine as well. Um, I certainly use this without essential oils in it before. And I give it a really good mix and I store this in an airtight container. Otherwise you will get um, clumps. It will go really hard. Um, you could make dishwasher tablets if you really wanted to, but that's another step that is completely and utterly unnecessary. I just leave a spoon in the jar that I'm keeping this in and I scoop it into the um, little dishwasher flap thing that you put the powder in. Um, just, yeah, I don't have time to be making dishwasher tablets as nice and fancy as that would seem. Just don't have time for that. So I'm just going to store it in a jar and keep it in my um, drawer underneath my sink. So there you go. Dishwashing powder. If you want to add in a rinse aid, I just use cheap vinegar. Um, you don't need to buy the expensive stuff. Cheap vinegar is fine and I just keep topping it up with that. If you want to clean windows and glass flashbacks, you could use your vinegar as well. Um, I don't really like the smell of it. Not that it lingers, it's just when you spray it, it can be a bit intense. Some people say you can use metho, which um, I find way, way, way too intense. Um, another thing you could use is vodka. If you want to waste your vodka on clean windows, that's totally up to you. Um, we just use um, this spray and wipe, this 
Parcel um, soap dilute um, on the windows with a microfiber cloth that's wet and then a dry microfiber cloth over the top and we find that works fine when we do clean our windows but we have um, a dog and three little kids so um, I really struggle in making window cleaning a priority because I know that they're just going to be dirty in a few minutes time anyway now oven cleaners oven cleaners are really toxic and gross um, I have used them in my past house um, when we sold just because I wanted the oven to look real nice and clean um, for sale. If you did want to clean your oven um, regularly, I would be using the grumptions on it. Um, but a lot of people also put a bowl of water in there, turn it on and let it steam. And then I would probably hit it hard with the grumptions. Um, otherwise, I don't really bother, especially in my wood fired oven. Um, I just let the heat clean it. Um, my other oven over here, the white one, that bottom oven, the glass needs to clean. Um, but again, it's not priority on my list. I don't love cleaning. I'd rather be outside gardening. <laughs> so um, I just try and keep things really simple and, you know, it doesn't bother me that the glass isn't see-through because it's not going to be see-through because I cook a lot. And so I don't want to be forever scrubbing my oven. If cleaning is your thing and you enjoy that then i would be using this grumptions on it now a lot of people love to use um, air fresheners which are full of toxic fragrances um, they are really really bad for you so if you do want to have pretty smelling home i would suggest um, investing in a diffuser and some good quality essential oils you don't need many and you don't need to buy the really expensive ones um, you need good quality ones, so you make sure they're pure. But what I mean is um, something like lemon balm is really, really expensive. Um, you're talking about $250 for five mils where you can get lemon or orange, which are about um, $10 to $20 for 15 mils. And very similar uplifting fragrance. You could mix it in with peppermint, which also isn't very expensive as well. Um, so just be smart with the um, scents that you choose. Um, citrusy are really nice, eucalyptus, um, minty are really nice as well. I like tangerine, lemongrass and spearmint all mixed together, equal drops. That's my favourite scent in the home as well as um, lemon eucalyptus. Now for cleaning floors. Um, I just use a dash of the liquid castile soap. You don't want too much, otherwise it will get slippery. And then I pop in a hatful of eucalyptus oil. So I buy this cheap eucalyptus oil for cleaning. It's 100% pure and it's Aussie owned, but this really cleans well and it smells beautiful when you're um, mopping and it stays, it lingers. So um, that is the only way that I clean my floors now and it's safe to use on all different sorts of surfaces. So I've got slate here, floorboards and tiles. If you want to clean your drains, um, if they're a little bit blocked or clogged, then you can use bicarb. I would run the hot water tap first to make sure that all the water sitting in the drain is warm. Pour in a cup or so of bicarb, and then you could either pop in some citric acid and then top up with warm water or um, vinegar. And that should bubble up and fizz up and that will help clear out any blockages in your drain. So I think I've covered everything that I use in my kitchen and some other um, alternatives that you could use to clean, clean your kitchen. I hope this helps you make the switch from toxic cleaners to no tox cleaners in your home. And next week I'll be talking about swaps you can make in your bathroom.